What's up, everybody? WrestleMania weekend has finally kicked off because this is my 2017 Hall of Fame review. Could be running down the Hall of Fame and what happened. As I said, two nights away from WrestleMania could be sooner, whenever you're depending on whenever whoever's watching this, whenever. Who's ever watching, if you're watching on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or after WrestleMania, I thank you for watching. I appreciate it. So the 2017 Hall of Fame, this is my review. It, tonight was the Hall of Fame, just ended. Tomorrow's NXT TakeOver Orlando, that will be a great event. And Sunday's WrestleMania, 33. So here we go with my Hall of Fame review. Kicked off first with, first was uh, Bischoff, Eric Bischoff, inducting one of his good friends, Diamond Dallas Page. DDP comes out, Bischoff had a pretty good speech about his friend DDP, saying how he saved Jake and Scott Hall and saved many others from DDP by saving them by DDP Yoga. Or them starting to do DDP yoga saved their lives. And not just the yoga, but DDP caring about them and caring for people. So Bischoff talked about when he met DDP in the AWA. And they got in a bar fight when they first met. Then they, then they uh, ran into each other in the hotel and apologized and made up. And then DDP called Dusty Rhodes, got hired to come into WCW to be a manager and a commentator. And then DDP actually, I believe, because Bischoff said he was out of work because the AWA just went under. And DDP actually got Bischoff hired, I think, at WCW. And Eric Bischoff mentioned how he shouldn't be the one here inducting DDP because it should be Dusty Rhodes. That that was very sad to hear that. And that is probably true. Dusty Rhodes would have probably loved to induct Diamond Dallas Page, but sadly he passed away. And Dusty, if he's still alive, I believe he'd only be like 62 years old. So that's pretty tragic he had to pass away at, I believe, 59 or, or no. Maybe Dusty was 16. I think he was 69, but he'd only be 70, like 72 years old by now. So that's pretty young to die. So then DDP comes out, has a great speech. It was a great speech. Mentioned Dusty Rhodes. He got really emotional. DDP got really emotional when he talked about Dusty Rhodes. Because Dusty believed in him. He gave him an opportunity in 91, 92. He gave him an opportunity. He kept fighting for him. He motivated DDP and told him, If you're not in this business to be world champion, get out of it. Stuff like that. So Dusty was a great friend to Diamond Dallas Page. He was like a friend, like a brother, like a father figure. DDP had a great speech. Can you feel the bang? Yes, I can. Diamond Dallas Page, Hall of Famer. You deserve it. You really deserve it, man. Because you saved a lot of people's lives with DDP Yoga. And you saved Scott Hall and Jake the Snake. And not just that you save people's lives after your wrestling career with DDP yoga and motivating people. But you were definitely, you overachieved in your wrestling career. I never thought Diamond Dallas Page would be world champion when I first, when I started watching him a lot and seeing him on pay-per-views in like 95. I didn't think the guy would ever be a top star, but he... From his work ethic, Diamond Dallas Page, because of his hard work ethic, he became a world champion. He didn't just get the world title because he was Bischoff's friend. The guy worked his ass off and deserved to be world champion. 
DDP also mentioned his great feuds with Macho Man Randy Savage. In the ring with Sting, Ric Flair, Hollywood Hogan when he won the world title at Spring Stampede 99. It was a great speech. Diamond Dallas Page, you are a Hall of Famer and I'm proud of you. And it was great to see you get inducted tonight. Up next we had number two going... Number two was the Rock and Roll Express. Jim Cornette inducted them. A lot of people were excited for Jim Cornette. A lot of people were excited to hear what he was going to do with a live mic in front of him. Live TV on the network. He could have cursed. He could have went off. He could have shooted if he wanted to. But he didn't. He is a pro. He's a professional. He's not going to... He's not going to disrespect WWE and Vince and Triple H after they invited him to the Hall of Fame. And I don't know if they even wanted to invite him. They probably invited him for a favor to the Rock and Roll Express because they probably asked for Jim Cornette. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Triple H called Jim Cornette and invited him. I don't think Vince did that. Just like Triple H got Bruno San Martino in the Hall of Fame, Triple H called the Warrior, patched things up, got the Warrior in the Hall of Fame. I'm sure Triple H will probably get Jim Cornette in the Hall of Fame, even if Vince doesn't like it. And the Midnight Express, by the way, they should go in the Hall of Fame also. I'm talking about Sweet Stan Lane, Bobby Eaton, and Dennis Condry. The other guy that is a member, Randy Rolls, I don't even know if he's alive anymore, but he was in the Midnight Express. His name was Randy Rolls. I don't know if the guy's alive. But if he's alive, why not put him in the Hall of Fame with the Midnight Express and Jim Cornette? <clears throat> so Jim Cornette mentioned how he has a live mic in front of him. He could go off and say anything he wants to, but he didn't. The crowd was pretty dead quiet during his entire speech. He talked for a pretty long time. I mean, I could listen to Jim Cornette go on and on and on. I wouldn't get bored. The guy's super entertaining, in my opinion. And he knows his history of wrestling. So he talked about a lot of the history. Talked about the big crowds that he drew with the Midnight Express against the Rock and Roll Express. One of the greatest tag team rivalries of all time. Especially one of the greatest feuds and tag team rivalries and tag team feuds of the 1980s. It definitely was. So Jim Cornette mentioned, this wasn't very PG, but it was funny as hell to hear. Jim Cornette mentioned once he saw it live and in person when he's in Mid-South Wrestling and the Rock and Roll Express were coming to the ring. Jim Cornette says, he says they had more sex when they were coming to the ring than people have in an entire year. He says, I saw it firsthand. That was damn funny. And then he says in Smoky Mount Wrestling, the territory that he ran that gave him gray hair and made him lose his hair. He says the Rock and Roll Express, there would be no Smoky Mount Wrestling and the Rock and Roll Express really helped Smoky Mount Wrestling. Because they were veterans. And it was just... It was uh, surreal. Surreal. To see Jim Cornette on WWE TV. On the network. I never thought I'd see him back on WWE TV ever. I mean, maybe in 10 years I thought he might be in the Hall of Fame. But Jim Cornette, the guy has not appeared... On WWE TV since WrestleMania 17 in 2001. That's 16 years ago. Jim Cornette has not appeared on WWE TV in 16 years. So it was great to see him back. It was great to hear him talk. I'm a fan of Jim Cornette. The guy's a Hall of Fame manager. He needs to go in the Hall of Fame next year. No, he has to go in next year. Not only could Jim Cornette cut one of the best promos, but the guy was a hell of a manager. With his tennis racket always interfering with the Midnight Express, Jim Cornette was great.
and he had a Hall of Fame career. So then letting Jim Cornette come back to induct the Rock and Roll Express, hopefully that means that he'll be inducted into the Hall of Fame soon with the Midnight Express. <clears throat> Even though the Midnight Express never, ever worked WWE, WWF, but Rock and Roll Express actually did. Somebody said... I forget who it was. I think it was on the red carpet to the Hall of Fame. Someone said that the Rock and Roll Express never worked for the WWE. Well, that's not true. Because they did appear on 1993 episodes of Raw. And they did appear at Survivor Series 93. And the Rock and Roll Express came back during the Attitude Era. And they came back for a short run in 1998. So, the Rock and Roll Express have stepped in a WWE ring before, WWF ring, and they have worked in the WWF before. So, whoever said they haven't, they were wrong. Because I know I saw them in the WWF. Survivor Series 93, Raw from 93 episode, and in 1998 they appeared on a couple Raws. So, Jim Cornette had a great induction speech. As I said, the crowd seemed really dead. Maybe some of them didn't know who Jim Cornette was because there's a lot of new fans. I don't know. Even if you're 20 years old, you should still know who Jim Cornette is because the guy was around in 96, 97. Anyways, Rock and Roll Express come out. They seemed a little bit lost, especially Ricky Morton kept going through his notes and he said it twice. He said, I'm lost. I don't know where the hell I'm at. So I'm sure he's just, he could have been nervous. He could have been, I don't know, nervous and didn't know what to talk about next. But it was pretty damn funny. At one moment, Robert Gibson, this wasn't PG, this probably... He probably shouldn't have said this. It wasn't really, um, wasn't really appropriate. But Robert Gibson says about Ricky Martin, how Ricky Martin brought up he was Gene Simmons, and Gene Simmons wants to be Ricky Martin, something like that. And I'm sure back in the day, I'm sure the Rock and Roll Express got a lot of poontang, got a lot of it. I'm sure they did, because they were treated like rock stars. They had girls screaming for them like crazy, screaming, chanting, rock and roll, rock and roll. So, the Rock and Roll Express, back in the 80s, they were pimps. And I'm sure they got a lot. I'm sure they got a lot of women, a lot of women. So, Ricky Martin said, Gene Simmons wants to be me. It's not the other way around. And then Robert Gibson goes, and this wasn't appropriate, but it was damn funny. And a lot of stories, road stories and backstage stories, a lot of them in wrestling are not appropriate. They're not for kids to hear because the wrestling business is not really for kids. I mean, a lot of crazy shit happens. A lot of not, especially in the 80s, and drug use and partying, a lot of those stories are not for kids to hear. So anyways... Robert Gibson says about Ricky Morton, Ricky, show him your tongue. <laughs> he says, oh my God. That was funny as hell. I popped. I laughed. I gave him a round of applause. Robert Gibson telling Ricky Morton, he said about two or three times, show him your tongue. Show him your tongue, Ricky. Show him your tongue. <laughs> And then Ricky goes, I can't, he goes, I can't do that. Oh, that was classic. That was funny as hell. Ricky, show him your tongue. That was, that was epic. And Stephanie McMahon was sitting front row. I'm sure she wasn't happy to hear him say that. But I didn't see Triple H's, uh, I didn't see his kids sitting there with him. So, I don't think that many kids were in the audience. Except I did see Edge's daughter. He was holding his daughter on his lap. 
It's a rock and roll expresser. Their speech was good. It was entertaining, but they were a little bit lost. The highlight of it was Robert Gibson saying, Ricky, show me your tongue. That was funny as hell. Uh, I just, I'm going to watch that back just to laugh again. So up next was the third inductee was Rick Rude. The family of ravishing Rick Rude. Ricky Steamboat did the induction. Ricky Steamboat didn't talk for long at all. But Ricky Steamboat put over Rick Rude very nicely and says, Please welcome the family of ravishing Rick Rude. His family comes out. Well, his daughter, I didn't know he had a daughter. I never heard that. Rick Rude's daughter and his son and his wife. And he did have two sons, actually. And sadly, they showed one of his son's picture on the screen. And his son, one of his sons, I believe is his youngest, passed away. I believe last year in a motorcycle accident. So very sad that one of Rick Rude's son, sons passed away. Hopefully he can now be with his father. So Rick Rude's son, this guy was... Like a giant. He looked at least six foot seven. The guy was big as hell. He looked built in his face. He really looked like Rick Rude. He looked like our young Rick Rude looked just like his father. And when he was talking and then he started off with saying, Cut the music. What I'd like to have right now is for all you fat, out of shape. Orlando, South Orlando idiots or whatever he said. He ripped them. That was funny as hell. That was great. But during uh, Rick Root's son talking and his daughter, his daughter is very attractive, by the way. And his, uh, her brother said she's graduating college soon. During this, I just, I got really sad. Because uh, Rick Root... The guy is one of the greatest performers. The guy could talk. The guy could work. It was just very sad. Thinking about Rick Rude that the guy couldn't be here to speak for himself. So I got very sad. During his family talking, I just, I got very sad. I got a tear in my eye. But it was a good speech from his son. And then they went off. Next inductee was Natalia inducting her best friend, Beth Phoenix. And Natalia had a great speech. Natalia got emotional talking about her uncle, Owen Hart, the late, great Owen Hart that passed away. Natalia talked about him and said when he passed away and then I met Beth Phoenix, I believe it was my uncle Owen that made us meet and come together and be friends. That was great to hear. Like Natalia believes it's fate it was fate that she met Beth Phoenix. That was a great story. And that's probably true. Because I'm sure Owen Hart this is uh this is getting me sad too. I don't wanna start you know, I don't wanna start getting emotional, but this was sad too. Hearing Natalia talk about Owen Hart, her getting emotional made me sad. Because Owen Hart, the guy's a great family man. I'm sure he's a great uncle. I'm sure he's a very good uncle to Natalia. It's, it's just tragic. Owen Hart passed away like he did. The guy was one of the good guys in wrestling. Definitely one of the good guys. Great family guy. I'm sure he saved his money. All his money made. Great family guy. I'm sure he's a great uncle. Just a tragedy that Owen Hart is gone. So Natalia's speech got me pretty damn sad. And just talking about it is getting me sad. So then Natalia brings out her best friend Beth Phoenix. And uh... Before she brought out Beth, there's a picture of Owen Hart on the screen. That got a big pop. That got a big reaction. That was cool to hear Owen get a reaction. 
hopefully the guy's looking down and uh, seeing Natalia and hearing that reaction he got. Even though Owen Hart is no longer with us, the guy lives on and his career lives on on the WWE Network. You can relive his life and career by becoming a fan of his and watching his matches on the network. Watch King of the Ring 94, where Owen wins the King of the Ring. Watch WrestleMania 10, Owen Brett. So many great Owen Hart matches that are on the network. A great match he had on a Monday Night Raw in 94 against 123 Kid. That's a great one. So then Beth comes out and talks about people that she worked with and that were her friends she mentioned. Mickey James, who was next to her husband, I could see his uh, face. His name is Nick. He's Magnus in TNA, so that was cool to see him there next to Mickey, his wife. So she, Mickey got mentioned that she was Beth Phoenix's first ever opponent in a wrestling match. They showed the picture of them. They both looked really young. And then she talked about how Molly Holly really helped her out. Molly Holly helped her and actually paid her school off. Paid her school loans off and paid for her school. So that was very, very gracious and very nice of Molly Holly to do that. So then Molly Holly was getting choked up when they were showing her. And you can just tell Molly Holly to pay her school off and help her out like that. Give her her old wrestling gear. Molly Holly is, you can just tell, she's a really sweet, nice person. In pro wrestling, and Jim Ross said this once, and I'll never forget it. He said on a pay-per-view, No Way Out 2000, when Mick Foley lost and was supposed to be retired. But that is a storyline. Jim Ross says, I'll never forget it. He says, folks, there's a lot of asses in this business. There's a lot of jerks in this business. But, he says, Mick Foley's one of the good ones. He says, Mick Foley's a, a true friend and stuff like that. My point is, there's a lot of jerks in the business, a lot of asses in the business that are jerks to some of the fans and jerks backstage other wrestlers, jerks to... WWE employees. There's just some people in wrestling that are real jerks. Everybody knows that. But Molly Holly is definitely not one of them. She's one of the nicest people in wrestling. And one of the most caring people. I would say there's a lot of people in wrestling that are good. And that care for their co-workers. Like Molly Holly, DDP. A lot of guys, a lot of guys, and girls probably really care for each other and are really good friends and are not jerks and asses to fans like, let me think, Hornswoggle. I met that guy in person a couple years ago. He was a real ass, a real jerk. I don't care that he's with his son. He's still a real ass and wouldn't even come over to the fans to take one picture or sign one autograph. He was a real dick. So Hornswoggle, that's what I think, you you stupid, ugly, pathetic, miserable little midget. So she talked about Molly Holly, how she really helped her and she was sweet to her and nice to her, paid her school off. She talked about how Candace Michelle helped her out. She mentioned Michelle McCool, Layla, Natalia, Candace Michelle. Sitting next to Candace Michelle, I was surprised to see Candace Michelle there, but she was invited, I guess. I was a big fan of Candace Michelle when she won the women's title. I thought she really improved in the ring, not just because Candace is from my hometown, but I was a fan of her as a wrestler. I thought she got a lot better. So Candace, I think, defeated her Beth. Phoenix defeated Candice to win her first women's title, I believe. I think it was No Way, No Mercy. Not No Way Out, No Mercy. I think 07 or 06, one of those years. She won the women's title. 
So she said, I had great chemistry with Candice Michelle. Sitting next to Candice Michelle, it really looked like Christy Hemi. I guess she was invited. And she brought up, uh, she brought up Cherry, who used to be in the company. She brought up Beth Phoenix. Who else did she bring up? Melita, Trish. I don't know if she brought up Maurice, because Maurice was in her era and was around then. But it was a great speech by Beth Phoenix. Mentioned a lot of great. A lot of good former divas that were in the company. Eve Torres. She really put Eve Torres over. And they seem like two great friends. And Eve Torres seems like a super nice woman. I never met her, but Beth Phoenix said great things about her. So then Beth played a little trick or swerve on Edge, her husband. They kept showing Edge. He had their daughter on his lap. That was a sweet moment, cool moment. And Beth says, and yes, I want to thank Adam. And the crowd popped, of course, because Adam is Edge's real name. So they popped for Adam, for Edge. And then she says, the rated R superstar. And then some guy, announcer, started interrupting Beth. Who was it? It was Tony Chimmel. The announcer that used to be on SmackDown for a very long time. He used to announce Edge and say, The Rated R Superstar. Very long introduction he used to do for Edge when Edge would come down to the ring. So that was cool to see Tony Chimmel come out on stage and do that for Edge. I'm sure Beth planned it and didn't tell her husband that she was going to do that. Because Edge, Adam, seemed... Pretty embarrassed and surprised and pretty happy about it. So good speech by Beth Phoenix. It was very good. Up next was, let's see here, the Warrior Award. Dana Warrior. They showed during the red carpet, they showed Dana Warrior with her two daughters. The children of the late Ultimate Warrior. And those girls are really growing. I think two, three years ago they were at the Hall of Fame. When they're, yeah, 2014. When their father went into the Hall of Fame. They were pretty short. And of course they're three years younger. But now they look really tall. They look much bigger, more grown up. I don't know how old they are. My guess is 15 or 16. But they are really really growing they're really growing tall that that's all i could think of so dana warrior talks does a pretty good induction for the guy eric that was a football player i forget for which team but sadly the guy got paralyzed from playing football and sadly that could happen in football very dangerous sport i mean Especially if you put your head down when you're running. I mean, you're talking about super athletes running full force into each other head first. That's not supposed to happen. That's not good. Even if they have a helmet, they can still break their necks and sadly get paralyzed. So Dana Warrior introduces Eric. The guy's a true wrestling fan. He grew up, as he told a lot of stories, he grew up during the Attitude Era. It's one of his favorites was Stone Cold Steve Austin. I believe he said he was six or seven, or maybe nine years old, or either nine years old or younger. And the guy was watching the Attitude Era. Uh, if I was six or seven, I don't, I do not think my mother would have let me watch the Attitude Era. Uh, that's. Uh, I'm just saying, six or seven is not appropriate for someone to watch the Attitude Era, but whatever. So, good induction, the guy had a great speech. Eric, I'm glad you got the Warrior Award. You deserve it. You are going to be fighting for the rest of your life, fighting for the good fight. To, you said one day you will walk, and I hope you do walk. I don't know, man. 
If I was in a wheelchair, I don't think I'd fight as much as him. I would probably would end my life, honestly. I shouldn't say that, but that's probably the truth. But who knows? If I would get paralyzed, maybe I wouldn't want to die. I don't know. But that guy's a true fighter, a true warrior. He deserves a warrior award. And I'm glad he got honored at the Hall of Fame tonight. Up next now was the final inductee. By the way, I want to go back to Diamond Dallas Page. He was up first. He had uh, four women with him, and he said, These are not my Diamond Dolls anymore. These are my four daughters. Four women with him. They all look over 25, I would guess, or under 25. I had no clue that DDP had four daughters, and all four of them look pretty damn good. I don't know, I don't think he had any kids with Kimberly, so maybe he did, I don't know. But DDP, you got some good looking women as your daughters. So back to now, after the Warrior Award we had Kurt Angle. Or no, 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 we had Teddy Long. Teddy Long was a sixth inductee. Teddy Long was inducted by the APA. They didn't do that long of an induction for Teddy. JBL seemed like an ass. JBL was probably drunk. He's probably really drunk. Who knows? I don't know. JBL's a drunk. That's my opinion. The guy sounds like an idiot on commentary and when he's talking on a Hall of Fame stage. So Teddy Long inducted, he did a pretty cool speech, it was entertaining, it was good to hear Teddy Long and then he says he's the only nine year general manager in WWE history. Didn't seem like Teddy was general manager for nine years, that's a really long time. Seemed like he's general manager about five years. To me, seems like Vicky Guerrero... Seems like she was general manager for 10, 20 years. Seems like her general manager ship when she was general manager seemed like it would never ever end. It was ridiculous. As I have a picture of her uh, husband, ex husband, Eddie Guerrero, Vicky, you seemed like you were general manager longer than Teddy Long. I, you were general manager, I don't know how long, maybe two, three years. But you, you, you as general manager, Vicky, it seemed like it would never end. I remember she, I believe, got tombstoned by The Undertaker on a SmackDown. That was a great moment. When that happened, I popped for it. Nothing against Vicky as a person, just her character. I wanted her character off of TV. I was sick and tired of seeing her and hearing her, especially when she come out and scream, excuse me, excuse me. And then she keeps screaming, excuse me. That was really annoying. I'll tell you one thing, Vicky had great heat. Not like great heat like we want you to stay around, you're a great heel, heat like get off my TV and never come back. But good for Vicky. I'm glad she made a lot of money from WWE after Eddie passed. Glad she made her money. Probably a lot of money. She probably put it away. And she still has a daughter to support. I think one of her daughters is under 18. And now with that money she got from WWE, she went to school, I believe, to become a nurse. Or a medical assistant. One of those. So rest in peace, by the way, Eddie Guerrero. That was really sad when um, Vicky and her family inducted Eddie Guerrero in 2006. That was really sad and I think that it was too soon. That was too soon. Because Vicky could barely talk. She was uh, too upset. And it was too soon. I mean, Eddie passed, I think, in November. November 2005, then April 2006. 
he was inducted. He deserved to be inducted, but it was too soon, in my opinion. Well, now my voice is getting sore, so I'm going to end this soon. The final inductee. Kurt Angle. Wrestling God. The guy's a wrestling God. <clears throat> now my voice is changing. <clears throat> it's been a long night. Hall of Fame was like three and a half hours. Anyways, I've been talking a long time. Sorry if I'm boring you, but it was a long show. So this review is going to go a couple more minutes. Kurt Angle, Wrestling God, just one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time. Definitely Kurt Angle's in my top five or top ten greatest wrestlers of all time and favorites of all time. He's that good. He was a natural from an amateur wrestler, Olympic gold medalist, won the Olympic gold medal with a broken freaking neck. Kurt Angle picked up the business like he's doing it for 25 years when he got in. The guy's a natural, picked it up faster than anybody before, became WWE champion at No Mercy 2000 in October 2000, defeated The Rock to win his first world title. Had classics with Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Shawn Michaels, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, The Rock, Stone Cold, who else? John Cena, I guess he had some decent matches with Cena, but their feud wasn't that great. Undertaker, Kurt Angle, and Undertaker had some classics. Some great classic matches. So John Cena and Ducks, Kurt Angle. Cena put him over. That was cool to hear. Kurt Angle comes out. His music hits. And then the chant started. You suck. And of course, the you suck chants now, those are done out of love. I believe... I really truly believe those you suck chants are done out of love and respect for Kurt Angle. So the you suck chant start that was great to hear brought me back like 15 years ago when Kurt Angle was in the company. Or over 10 years ago when he was there. Because I believe Kurt Angle was in TNA for 10 years. Or close to 10 years. <clears throat> So Kurt Angle, the guy had a great speech. It was fantastic. He put on the little cowboy hat. He sang the Jimmy Crack Corn song. Then he had someone bring out the wig and the, the earmuffs that amateur wrestlers wear. He put the wig and earmuffs on. That was classic. And it was, it was fantastic. Kurt Angle thanked his brothers and his mother and his wife. He started getting emotional when he talked about it, how his wife saved his life. And she probably did. Because she told him to quit it, getting these DUIs, quit all this stuff. If you don't quit it, I'm going to leave you and take the kids. So, thankfully, that strained up Kurt. Because if it went up, the guy might not be with us right now. Something bad would have happened. So I'm really happy for Kurt Angle. The guy's one of my favorite wrestlers to watch. The guy was damn entertaining. And the crowd started chanting almost immediately, one more match, one more match. I hope we get more than one more match. Because I think Kurt Angle has enough. The guy could wrestle once a month, especially on once, twice a month on pay-per-views. Maybe wrestle, I don't know, five times a year on Raw or SmackDown, maybe. Anyways, I hope Kurt Angle wrestles at least five more matches, at least. I mean, have him work with Rollins. Have him work with AJ Styles. You can have him work with, um, I'm trying to think... Of course, he worked with AJ before in Impact Wrestling, but that was a long time ago. 
Rollins, AJ, you could work with Triple H again. Could work with, I don't know, Samoa Joe again, Kevin Owens, you could work with. They could have a great match. You could Angle could work with Sami Zayn or Braun Strowman or Roman Reigns. Angle could work with John Cena again. Maybe they could have a match at SummerSlam 2017. Who knows? How about Angle against Nakamura? Angle, Nakamura. That'd be fantastic. I'd love to see that. Or Angle and Finn Ballard. That'd be a fantastic match. I mean, Kurt Angle, final thoughts. You deserve it. You're one of the... Seems like you were in WWE over 10 years, but you were not. You did so much in a short period of time. You were the Intercontinental European Champion at the same time in 2000. You were WWE Champion many times. You were a 2000, 2000 King of the Ring winner. Kurt Angle, one of the greatest WWE superstars of all time. One of the greats. So I'm just really happy he's back. He, I'm very happy Kurt Angle's back home where he belongs, and he got to go in the Hall of Fame. This ends my 2017 Hall of Fame review. I'm out of breath. I'm pretty drained because the Hall of Fame was long. I'm not complaining. I was happy to watch it. I'm just glad it didn't go over four hours. Uh, WrestleMania, I just thought about WrestleMania is going to go over six hours. That I'm going to be freaking drained from that. I hope something good happens, exciting, because, I don't know, something good, exciting happens, I even be more drained, probably from screaming and getting hype. So anyways, it was, it's been a long night. It was a long Hall of Fame. This has been a long review. I appreciate it, and thank you if you stuck with this entire review and watched. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Twitter at WWE NXT Guy and like, comment, share, and subscribe. WrestleMania, not WrestleMania 21, but WrestleMania is two nights away, one night away, just about one, one night away almost. Tomorrow's NXT TakeOver Orlando. I'll be doing a review for it. And I'll be doing a review for WrestleMania and the Raw after WrestleMania. And I'll do a review for SmackDown Live. Even though zero people watch my SmackDown Live reviews. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed my Hall of Fame 2017 review. Hopefully you weren't bored out of your mind. If you were, you could turn it off anytime. NXT TakeOver Orlando tomorrow, and then WrestleMania. I'm ready to go. I'm excited for those two events. Bye for now, everybody.